I just remember having this realization and looking into your eyes and saying, all of them are going to grow up and move out. Right now, it feels like this is the only show in town. This is the only thing happening and it's going to last forever. But all of them are going to grow up and they're going to move out and it's just going to be the two of us. And so me and you, we need to stay connected and make sure that we put uh, marriage first. My name is Eric Orton. I'm Emily Orton. Welcome to the What Could Go Right podcast where we talk about personal growth and family connections and parenting adult kids, make, just making the most of midlife. All right. So we're going to talk about rediscovering each other because here's here's the math on this, not to be boring, but I feel like we've done a thing that we call a 100-year life map and we've looked at the years that we have our kids at home and we've realized that even though we have five kids which for some people is a big family between the ages of the youngest being born or the oldest being born and the youngest moving out covers a couple of decades but even so given today's lifespan we're going to spend a lot more time being parents of adult kids than we ever were of parents of young children. And we're going to have more time with just the two of us. Ideally. That, ideally. than we, you know, assuming that we live and die of old age, that we're going to have a lot more years of us together than we ever will of being parents of young kids. And so um, I guess what we want to talk about today is having the forethought and planning for that so that we don't get stumped when we get to that stage of life when our kids have moved out and it's just us as a mom and dad at home and we realize wow we are now strangers yeah I remember uh was a really big moment to me like a core memory for me was one day in our little apartment we were both standing in the hallway and I think we had three or four of our five kids at the time and they were kind of running back and forth around us and the tallest one probably only came up to my elbow like they were little and and I just remember having this realization and looking into your eyes and saying, all of them are going to grow up and move out. Right now, it feels like this is the only show in town. This is the only thing happening and it's going to last forever. But all of them are going to grow up and they're going to move out. And it's just going to be the two of us. And so me and you, we need to stay connected and make sure that we put uh, marriage first and make that our priority, it'll be better for us. It'll be better for the kids. They'll feel more stable. And anyway, for me, that was just such a moment of uh, recommitment and dedication to our marriage. I was so drawn into the everyday demands of mothering many small children and being a caregiver and an, the emotional, you know, person. But that was transformative, and we try to keep that at the forefront in all the years forward. And I think as the dad who was often out of the house working a lot, it made me realize I need to make sure that I prioritize my marriage with Emily because it's really easy to just sort of get sucked in and disappear into professional life, into a career and work and just chug along and be happy to be the provider and while you're raising kids. And and I think both of us had to come out of those roles and say make sure that we're connecting as as boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, husband and wife, and really lovers. making sure as lovers. And I actually, I'd love for you to tell that story about um, oh, I, the cake. Well, okay, how about this? So we met this awesome guy, and he was a widower, and him and his wife had been married for, I don't know, 50, upwards of 50 years when she passed away. And we asked what some of the secrets were, and he told us that, the kids told us actually that his wife used to um, always give him the biggest piece of cake or always kind of put him first and make sure he w was the most important person in her life. And the kids all knew that he was the most important person in their mom's life. And they would say, why is dad getting the biggest piece of cake? And she would say to them, because he's my lover and you're just my child. <laughs> And she was giving them in, you know, a framework for how their family was organized. And it was, we are going to strengthen the husband-wife relationship so that we have a supportive place for these children to grow up in. And we adopted that. I think our kids have grown up knowing mom and dad are more important to each other than we are to them. 
they, our kids know they are in second place. It sounds no question. It sounds heartless when you say it on the face of it, but our kids actually love it and find so much security in that. And I remember um, one time our daughter went to kindergarten and someone asked her, when are your kids going to get divorced? When are your parents, 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 parents going to get divorced? And she said, what? <laughs> and look, Never. no guarantees. Crazy things happen, but we're doing everything we could to put each other first. And I, and I think, ironically, kids like that. They, they want to know that they are not more important to their dad than their mother. Mm-hmm. And they want to know that they are not more important to their mother than their dad is. And it, although it puts them in second place, it, like you're saying, I think it gives them a, a deep sense of security and confidence and trust mm-hmm. that the, the two people that they rely on the most are taking, that are going to take care of them are first taking care of each other, and that gives them the ability to better take care of the kids. Mm-hmm. And so I think that it actually, even though it puts them in second place, it puts them in a better place. Yeah, that's a great way of saying it. And I want to just add that whether this is where you started or you came from that mindset or you're in a position where you've realized, oh my gosh, I've focused so much on whatever other area it is of my life than on this marriage relationship it's not too late. It's never too late. It's never, never too, too late. late to say, hey, you know what? I love you and I want to have good feelings between us. And I want more of us feeling like we're in harmony. So that can always change. And for a lot of people, that happens as their kids are moving out of the house. They've gotten into a really good work rhythm where they know who's picking up, who's dropping off, who's covering what and managing all of the needs for the kids. But then when the kids leave, there's suddenly this shift in bandwidth. And maybe it's more of a shift for one person. A couple of episodes ago, we talked to a couple, York and Jane, and Jane was the primary caregiver at home, and York was the primary breadwinner. And so as the kids started moving out, her bandwidth shifted, and his did not. His was pretty much still the same, and that created um, an opportunity for them to learn a lot. It started with a little bit of disconnect and then they had to figure out how to reconnect. Yeah, it can create a vacuum as the kids start to leave. But I think if it starts early or at any stage, you know, whenever you start putting the, the, the spouse first before the kids creates, first of all, for a better marriage and it gives the kids more stability and comfort. And, and I think to this day, you're very generous. And even though my son eats more food than I do now, you'll, you'll still offer me the prime cut of whatever it is, whether it's a piece of cheesecake or a piece of chicken or whatever. And our kids know it's because we're lovers. They're just kids. And, and they love that. They love that. Even when the younger ones will say like, Oh gross, mom and dad are kissing. And the older ones are like, you know, you love it. You'd be really sad if they didn't feel this way about each other. (laughs) Awesome. Anything else on this? Well, I just think it's a it's a beautiful opportunity to say let's rediscover each other because there's been a lot of growth and change along the way as you've raised your kids and gone through all of the experiences together to to if you look up and see a stranger, then let's get curious and be like, who's this person? This wonderful person that I've, you know, been able to accomplish so many great things with and and what else are we going to be able to do together? Make some space for that. What could go right? What could go right? All right. Thanks for listening. Hey there. It's Eric. If you haven't already, you should really go sign up for one of our free discovery calls. Have you ever asked the question, what if, or wouldn't it be cool if? If you're like me and a lot of people, you answer that question, but kind of in a limited way. You don't really let yourself go there. And so what I'd love to do is get on a call with you and help you get past some of your limiting thoughts, limiting beliefs, and answer that question as boldly and beautifully as your imagination will allow. They're fun, they're free, they're painless. All you got to do is go to theawesomefactory.nyc forward slash discovery, pick a time slot that works with you, and we'll spend a few minutes and help you go to an amazing place and help you discover what's possible in your life.